another Zoom chat today. I'm very happy to have with me Tyrone Green. Tyrone, thanks for making time to be with us. And how are you keeping in lockdown? No, no, thank you for having me. Uh, no, it's, it's it's been tough, but you can only do what you're allowed to do. So I've been coping as good as well I can. For sure. And obviously, we wanted to um, touch on the fact that you 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 um, you know signed to make a move from the Lions to English club Harlequins. Um, just tell me a bit about. Uh, that move, the the reasoning behind it, and how excited you are for that next chapter in your career. Yeah, I think I'm very excited. Looking forward to. It. I think it's going to be a great journey. Yeah, I think the decision process. Uh, I felt like I made the best decision for my career. That was my main uh, goal in the process. I think I felt like uh, making the move to Harlequins. I can stay at the top of play. Um, while uh, taking my rugby to the next level. So I felt like the move uh, was the best thing for my career. So I, I felt like there wasn't a better decision to be made and looking forward to it, very excited for it. Yeah. And obviously, um, Tyrone, I mean, being uh, only 22 years old, I mean, it's quite, you're quite young to, to make a move to an overseas club. Was that something that, that factored into your decision making just in terms of, um, you know, when, you know, when you moved over at, at what stage of your career? I mean, uh, I know there's obviously still the ability to, to qualify for the box while playing for an overseas club. How much did that sort of stuff factor in just obviously how young you were and, and where you were um, in your career at the Lions at, at this point? No, I think my age wasn't a factor for me. I, I, with me, it's, it's, I make the best decision based on uh, my career. I never take age into it because... I feel like then you limit yourself. So for me, I just made the uh, best decision for my career. And uh, like I said, it, it, being able to play for Spring Mox while being over was also it was a big factor for me. So yeah, it, it just was my career was how do I put it? it making that decision, age had nothing to do with it in the greater scheme of thing. And I just felt like where I am currently in my career to take it to the next level, this was the correct decision. Sure. And Tyrone, just chatting about uh, your game at the moment, I mean, there was quite a bit of opportunity for you to play uh, Super Rugby consistently before uh, the competition was halted in, in March. Just chat a bit about uh, that experience to uh, start consistently. Uh, obviously, you play quite a bit on the wing. Um, so just chat about that consistent game time, but also playing on the wing as opposed to fullback, where I presume is your preferred position. No, getting consistent game time is always the best. Uh, yes, you can you get chance, a lot of opportunities to play and a lot of opportunities to prove yourself. So uh, we didn't have a great start, uh, but it might sound that uh, might not sound really good. But we felt like we're getting getting there. But yeah, so I, I'm happy with the with getting the game time. Uh, ideally, would have preferred fullback, but. I don't mind playing win. I'm comfortable there and the team needed me there. So uh, I was happy to do it. Uh, a few results didn't go away. So that, that was a bit frustrating. But uh, getting game time and starting I think all the games was quite uh, satisfying. So it gives you a lot of opportunities to showcase what you have. For sure. And Tyrone, just talking about Harlequin specifically, I mean, what has been your communication with the club there in terms of um, you know, what they're looking uh, for uh, out of you and, and what you think will benefit your game, making that move to that club and, and that sort of competition in the Northern Hemisphere? Yeah, I think specifically with Harley Quinns, they play a very similar type of rugby, uh, attacking rugby to what we play, some of the team play here locally. Uh, so I think that fits in quite well with me. And then I think as a premiership as a whole, uh, I feel like uh, the technical and tactical part of how they play, how they have to adjust to the weather, and just how the teams play in terms of even England as, as a whole. Uh, I feel like that's where I can improve my game and take my game to the next level. So it's just, uh, I feel like, and Harley Quinn's actually where the, was the perfect team to make that move. Because like I said previously, I can stay where I am and play the top rugby I love while improving all other aspects in terms of the premiership and Harley Quinn's. Sure. And Tyrone, what, uh, what areas of your game would you say you feel at this point you're still looking to refine or improve uh, things that you feel um, you need to add in order to become a, a fully well-rounded player? Yeah, I think I have to keep on learning. doesn't matter at what age I am. Uh, but yeah, I think playing uh, with the likes of Mike Brown uh, will be his test veteran. He's Harley Quinn's most capped player. So uh, I think 
tactically and technically as a fullback, I think I still got time to improve. Uh, Vision-wise, to the likes of, like I said, Mike Brown, Villeroux. So if I can improve, uh, like tactically, um, then uh, that's also a step. So that's my my main goal. But without losing who I am, so I feel like there's certain areas where, in the Premier Shop, I'll be forced to 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 improve. Uh, so looking forward to it. It's going to be a challenge, but it's 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 something that like you said, I can make myself a complete rugby player sure. and then reach the top. Yeah. And Jaro, just um, going through, I mean, obviously you, you played for the junior box and um, you, you came through the junior ranks quite quickly. Um, just tell me a bit about uh, maybe the influences in your career, um, coaches or people uh, maybe not even involved necessarily with coaching or, or rugby specifically, maybe just family, anyone who's really inspired you or or kind of been a mentor to you um, as, as you've gone through your career and, and got to the senior level? I think family will always be a, a big part. They've always pushed me to keep me going. Uh, I think coaches, yeah, there's been a lot of uh, good coaches. Uh, learned a lot. You have to learn every time you uh, get a new coach. Uh, I think mentors, yes, and I've had many. Uh, I think one, one big mentor to me at, also as a coach, but also helped me personally, was uh, Coach Joey uh, Mongala. Uh, he, he helped me from a personal point of view also. So uh, he was a great mentor in terms of what to do. And then I think there's been lots of coaches, uh, cu- current Super Rugby coaches, uh, last year Super Rugby coaches. I think learning from them, uh, taking that step up to Super Rugby, they made the transition quite easy. And then players around me, I think that was also a big... A big up, um, Alton Yankees is a legend at Lions. He's, uh, and I get along quite well with him. And then playing with mates like uh, Wandy Vince, I think that also they came through the ranks with me. Yeah. So that made the step up easier. I think a lot of there's been a lot of people in my rugby career uh, that's be, that's had a, helped me get to where I am currently. Sure. And Tyrone, we were chatting a bit um, before recording just about uh, obviously it's a, it's a bit of a difficult time now. Um, getting over to the club to to join them and um, maybe just uh, give a bit of an update on on where you stand in terms of linking up with the the club and and when you hope to perhaps get that first opportunity to uh, join the guys over there and and for how long are you contracted uh, to harlequins how you know how short or long term do you foresee that uh, new chapter in your career being yeah uh yeah so like i said before the recording uh we're trying to get there by july but it all depends on the coronavirus and what is allowed. So we're in the process of getting everything sorted in terms of visa and uh, travel. But yeah, trying to get in July, but uh, it all depends on what we will be allowed. Uh, I'm currently there for two years. So looking to make a long-term long term uh, move to England. Uh, but yeah, so currently there for two years and wanting to make my mark there. So that's the big thing. Yeah. And I know uh, you've you've mentioned previously in a couple of interviews I saw um, you, you stating. I mean, you know, some guys when they go overseas quite young, there's talk of well, maybe after you know four years of the qualification period, they might want to play for an adopted country. But so, I mean, your your dream has always been, and and am I correct in saying, remains still to play for the box? Um, is that still the, yes. the major passion and and the and the, the goal first and foremost? Yes, definitely. I think that's that that will always be the goal. Uh, it's, I've grew up wanting to play for them and it's not going to change and like I said previously is that with uh, Coach Jock and Coach Rossi being able to select from overseas made my decision much easier so the goal always be playing for the green and gold and I feel like making this move will give me a better chance in doing that yeah and uh, just looking back at your your career up to this point I mean are there um, maybe certain certain games or certain uh, performances that stand out for you as the, your your top highlights up until this point? Awesome. Uh, I always try to give my top performance. Uh, uh, no, I think it's, I enjoyed my under 20, uh, under 20 World Cup. I think uh, I really tried to make a big uh, mark there. And then throughout my senior rugby at Lions, I felt like uh, every game I tried to play and try to make... Uh, as big of an impact as, as possible and just try to do my best. Uh, I think it's my whole career, there's been ups and downs and I think I learned from all of them. Uh, a few injuries that set me back, but you have to learn from all these 
things. And like I said, it's been some, been some big moments in my career that I think that's helped me get to where I am. Uh, but yeah, there's quite a few. I think Curry Cup last year was a big uh, a step. I enjoyed all my rugby, especially my senior rugby. It's been it's been quite uh, challenging, but also being able to make that step up gives a person a lot of uh, confidence. Sure, and Tyrone, just I mean, I, I think most people when when they when they watch you play, I mean, it's clear that you uh, have an inclination to attack, and that's your strength is is with ball in hand and and being able to step and and that sort of thing. But in terms of finding the balance between that sort of element of the game, but also, um, you know, uh, defence and a kicking game. Uh, just tell me about maybe how that's evolved over the last year or two as you've stepped up to senior rugby in terms of finding a balance between uh, maybe your instinct being to, to run, but also knowing sometimes it's, it's not the best option. Yeah, I think at senior rugby, super rugby level especially, uh, that decision-making has to improve. Uh, there's not much space uh, in senior level rugby as what there is in junior level. So I think that, that I've had to improve there. Uh, still improving as much as I can in those aspects because your timing gets less. Uh, you need to make a decision quicker. So your instincts need to be the right decision. That, that you can't hesitate because then you're in two months. So I think making a step up to super rugby has also helped me quite a bit in terms of, like you said, when, when to make the decision to run or kick. Uh, but yeah, so still working my still working on that quite a bit, um, and I feel like this trip to Harlequins will also be a, a big help and make sure that I get to the level where I want to be. For sure. And Tyrone, just a, a final couple of questions. Tell me, are there any um, any players or um, or guys you you really looked up to that that you think play the sort of game that um, you'd 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 like to be able to? get to or perhaps have a sort of career that they've had? Awesome. Uh, I think a person I've said it quite a few times before, I think Damian McKenzie is quite a, a player that I, I feel like is quite a, is a complete fullback. So he's got a very good attacking game. His defence is phenomenal and uh, he's got a kicking game. So I feel like he's a complete player that I would uh, try to uh, uh, be as good as him if better. Uh, then I think there's lots of players out there that are on another level. Uh, I think, like I said, uh, Mike Brown is 35, if I'm correct. He's played over 300 games. So learning from him, that, that will be magnificent. I can only get better learning from him. And then I think naturally there's, there's players that you've looked up to growing up. I think Dan Carter, he's coming back to the Blues now. Yeah. So he's 30, 36, 37, and he's still playing some quality rugby. So players like that, to, you always have to look up to and try to be as, as great as them one day. For sure. Tyrone, just a final one. I mean, have you uh, had any clarity from the Harlequin staff or coaches in terms of uh, where they foresee you settling? I mean, do you think you're going to cover wing and fullback or um, do you think you'll be primarily viewed as, as one option? No, I think I'll be able to cover both. Uh, I have, I did tell them, don't they have seen me play. I've covered cover both quite comfortably. So I think I'll, I'll play where the team needs me. Uh, but yeah, we're uh, ideally looking for the future to settle in at uh, fullback. But uh, I'm uh, happy covering both, uh, whichever the team needs me currently. Sure. All right, great. Perfect, Tyrone. Thank you so much for making time. And uh, yeah, we wish you all the best on, on that new move and uh, we'll catch up soon. Perfect. Thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate it.